the logistics industry is looking towards huge opportunities in the future with the use of drones while some companies focus on last mile deliveries from businesses to consumers others focus on frequently neglected middle mile logistics the term middle mile logistics refers to deliveries made from one firm to another one such startup company is a latin american based aerial loop that calls itself a low cost civilian airline hello everyone i am zinal deria from the stack media group and i will be in conversation with pedro menesis ceo of aerial loop Pedro has been interested in drones since 2012 and decided to start a company with similar minds in 2020. Aerial Loop develops drones with low cost and high capacity. So Aerial Loop was founded in the year 2020 and how far has the voyage taken you? Did you need to make any changes to the plans you had before launching once you were finally operational? Let me give you a little bit of background. I started uh, developing drones 12 years ago and with the original project was the Galapagos UAB program and it was a drone before drones were common. Now everybody talks about drones but that was when drones were only military. And it was a joint collaboration between my university and Brazil Aeronautical University, Stanford University, Ecuador's university where I was teaching at the time, uh, San Francisco. and the Galapagos National Park. So the hardware part of the drones I knew for a long long time we sold our drones worldwide. And then the last 5 years I met uh, Andreas and my co-founders from Switzerland. They were autopilot suppliers. They are experts really in autopilot software. And during the beginning of the pandemic we decided you know we can have a lot more impact in the world if we join our previous hardware of drones and software with autopilots and really create a drone delivery airline is what we called and we put the word airline because we have to be as large and have the highest safety standards that you can have to make a change so we were very lucky to be born with this knowledge from the past but really the aerial loop is an operations company so our our kind of general goal was let's grow in latin america where we have access to easier skies less constricted regulations and build up our operations knowledge expertise and then the technology that comes with it because you no know, one thing is the drone one thing is the operations but really flying this very large number of flights every day is crucial so what i always try to point out is we're no longer like this startup trying to play around with drones and and software we're really a large scale operation learning how to operate internationally thousands of flights a day in multiple routes so that's kind of where we stand right now and that's kind of been the plan from the very beginning so how many drone manufacturers do you work with as a drone delivery service provider since we knew how to build drones we make our own drones at the beginning we purchased the original drones we purchased from european manufacturers they were really expensive drones the high quality drones are really expensive and then as we moved forward we understood that it was crucial for us to be competitive with lower cost applications so not only flying you know blood samples or medicines that are very expensive and that can pay very expensive airfares we knew that we wanted to compete in mass market food deliveries e-commerce deliveries document deliveries and this type of things so we decided to vertically integrate the drones so we do believe we're going to use multiple manufacturers over time our own drones are going to be outsourced first we manufactured somewhere outside but having control of the vertical technologies software hardware and another one that is crucial is the hub system which is how the drone interfaces with ground operations you no know, if you have few flights a day the drones land on the ground operators come to the drones and they pick up but if you're flying 60 flights a day with about 7 and a half minute turnaround times you need to support operators with semi automatic transfer stations so the drones land automatically these semi automatic stations bring the drones very close to the operator replaces the batteries replaces the payload and the drones get out of the hub and take off automatically so all these technologies are really the difference between our large scale operations and you know normal lower end operations how many daily flights are you currently operating According to the website you generated around 300 flights every week last year. So what is the current count? 300 we have to route we just opened the second route a month ago so we're ramping up the second route to 300. We're probably going to do in about 400 right now and it should be leveling off to 600 a week with the two routes and we're starting operation in uh, Peru we started already first flights uh, Colombia we set up the company there we sent the drone is a whole process to get permits but the idea is this year we want to open seven more routes and that should equal about 2100 
flights a week, which is a, quite an interesting number. Well, that is a very interesting number. So when do you plan to fly 2100 flights per week? The plan is by the end of the year. We have this great opportunity right now with opening a Mexico route. So our next stages is really Brazil, Mexico, and Colombia. We are going to grow more routes in Ecuador. And all together, we should have these seven fully operational routes. But if you fly 300 flights a week per route, you get these 2,100 flights a week. And that's an interesting number because I think that gives us the scale to perfect our systems. You know, it's complex not only to fly 300 flights a week in one route, but multiply that with international routes. You need command and control centers, communication centers and making sure teams can operate internationally and what's that's ready i believe our company is going to be ready to export this more than our own operations we're going to start looking at the model of helping other companies or other people operate their own routes with our support that's the more scalable approach pedro can you please elaborate on what kind of products you focus on delivering yeah, we transport everyday food, uh, pizzas. We have this customer that's always asking for desserts. And remember, these are routes that if you do it by ground, it would take you an hour, 20 minutes. So you basically couldn't get food if it wasn't flying. And we fly that same route for six minutes, six, seven minutes, depending on wind conditions. So it changes from I cannot get anything from the city to I can order whatever I want from the city. That's kind of what we do. So that's one vertical. We transport COVID samples both ways, you know, test samples to customers uh, and swipe samples back. We transport documents, checks, payments, that type of thing with banks and a few other verticals. And we are starting to transport e-commerce as well. Uh, we have uh, partnerships with people bringing e-commerce to Ecuador and then delivering it to people in Cuembo in our first route or vice versa. So it's interesting that we're really agnostic of platforms. Since we sized our payload to deliver three large pizzas, imagine how many cell phones can fit in the same space. So I'm very curious to know, why did you choose to step into the middle mile delivery industry? We do middle mile and that was a strategic decision from the very beginning. I think drones failed until now on last mile because last mile is really getting packages to your hands, right? To end customer houses. And technology is very complex complicated. It's much more dangerous. Regulators are not giving out permits for that. And then the last and most important thing is, no, you're competing with a bicycle driver with a backpack for $1.50. So it's not only the most complex part of the delivery, but it's also the lowest paid. We do middle mile, which is 10 to 40 kilometers away. We do it ultra fast with this vertical takeoff and horizontal transition drones. But it's also a lot more valuable because that's, you know, going through traffic, going through lack of infrastructure. And I think that's the most valuable part. So there's most companies started with last mile. I think they're, right now the successful companies are working very hard on solving the middle mile part. And I'm sure drones are going to fulfill the whole delivery processes, but it's better to approach something that works today and have a lot of experience in numbers. A real goal for the companies to have the largest daily operation and to be the company that's ready for when, you know, regulations open worldwide. I cannot even imagine the number of routes we can have in India. It's, it's just incredible. It's, it's probably in the tens of thousands of delivery routes every day in India. It's huge. But remember, Remember, compare, if you have a company that's flying two, three, five times a day, maybe 20 flights a week, versus a company has probably by that time 500,000 deliveries and, and the whole metrics that come with it, you know, safety, operation and all that, that's the company regulators are going to allow to come into different countries. So we want to be ready for, for those times. And I think they're going to come in three to five years. Aerial Loop delivers everything from pizzas to important documents, but it also requires consumer trust. How did your company earn that level of trust it was a whole process at the beginning people didn't even believe drone delivery could happen you know it's it's so new so we started with samples we had these partners marketplaces like rapi and other marketplaces that we said you know what let's contact customers and let's offer a free sample because the best way to gain trust is to make the people feel the process so what we do is we say you're gonna get this present from area loop and rapi but we share the link of the flight they knew that it was a drone delivery so they had videos and all that and they started understanding that I'm getting things here, but it's going through drone delivery. So it was basically showing them. And then the traction came afterwards. Once they get a free sample, they like to, oh, but I'd like to order this other thing and this other thing. And we start getting momentum. And it's also about getting close to the community. We have on our routes, we talk to critical people within the route to make sure that they don't, they're not scared and they understand what we're doing. They're going to see planes flying over there. We, we fly mostly through riverbeds and you no, know, we try to avoid houses because it's just safer. And we're going so fast that you no know, 30 
seconds more on the flight doesn't change anything for us. But we try to make sure that people understand that what we're doing is delivery. There's no cameras. And that, that's the whole process of getting the community to know what's happening. What kind of exemptions are you operating under? Like what type of rules are you following? As I was telling you before, the middle mile logistics brings a, a lot of benefits in regulations. It's not a random operation. It's not from point A to any house or anywhere. It's point A to point B. Always the same route, always the same altitude, always the same time in between flights. So it's very easy to predict. And that's why we've been given beyond visual line of sight permits here. We Remember, there's only five of these permits worldwide and we're, we have one of them. And that's very crucial because, you know, one thing is flying within visual line of sight. That means and most companies companies that you see in the news have only visual line of sight permit. That means you have to follow the drone with a pickup truck, with an operator to fulfill it. Our beyond visual line of sight really becomes completely automated from takeoff to landing. Normally we fly 20 kilometer distances, which is quite amazing. So that's the reason we're getting a lot of exceptions. Also Latin America has a little bit more of a flexible airspace. So that means we have routes that we can communicate with the regulators and have routes that are safe enough and that are interesting enough. And then the news things the new thing about regulators is, for example, the FAA, Europe, they're looking at how to bring drone delivery into their skies because they know it's going to be a big market and an important market. So both things are working in favor. We actually have permits right now, but at the same time, the U.S. regulators are allowing for more and more permits in the U.S. through waivers. That means the whole marketing is opening up. So we're happy that we're probably three years ahead in terms of number of flights. And that's why I told you we want to be the company that's ready to scale wherever regulators allow. Pedro, any kind of challenges you faced while seeking operating permissions from the government in different countries? Yes, permit is the bottleneck of drone delivery right now. You have to prove to regulators that what you're doing is safe. And since it's so new, it's like chicken and the egg approach. But the good thing right now is we have about 15,000 flights already done. We plan to do about 40,000 flights this year. But these past metrics help us a lot for getting permits. Uh, regulators want to do a ground risk analysis. They want to do SORA approaches. And we have a whole team working on regulations and, and that type of thing. But it is a process. They take time they at the beginning they don't understand then they start getting that it's not that bad then you have metrics you have sample routes you show them that this is safe and you build confidence with them our approach really is applying to permits in all the region all latin america because we know some permits are going to be here in two months and some are going to take two years but we want to open all of them at the same time because otherwise you start delaying the end result right so we we have a i call it a blanket permit approach every single country at the same time some are earlier some are later i would like to know the status of the drone permits for the ones that you've already acquired, the ones that are in process of being obtained and the ones that you will be getting in quarter two and quarter four of this year? Okay, so in Ecuador, we have both permits. They're beyond visual line of sight, and that's where we have our home advantage, I would call that. Uh, in Colombia, for example, uh, we have already gone through the whole process, and they're selecting specific routes to allow us to fly. Uh, and it's because, you know, correlated routes are going to be safer. But we already have the drone there. It's been certified. Not the, not only the drone, it's the whole process. You certify the drone, you certify the operators, and then you certify the route. We have done the two stages already. We're closing the certification certification of the route to start flying commercially there. I'm not the expert of the team on regulation. Santiago, my CEO, is leading the whole process of growth, but I know we have very close contacts in Argentina where we're opening the permit. Brazil and Mexico became our center of interest because we, we became logistic partners with AB and Beef, the largest uh, bottler in the world. And we want to do special projects with them, learning how our logistics and their logistics could improve the future of, of logistics. So it's we have these interesting common projects and that means we have to scale fast operations. The good news, for example, is Mexico already gave out permits to other companies. Brazil has one permit to another company. So it means like they went through the process. And I love the fact that there's other companies starting as well because they're helping us push the permits faster as we build our capacity locally and in the first few routes. And then we're going to be ready to just go to those countries. It takes us about two weeks to open a new route in, in any location in Latin America. And what is the most affordable pricing of your service? We have multiple pricing verticals. We usually charge $4.50 per flight for a single package. Remember, this is for a 20 kilometer route. So if you analyze this by kilometer, it's actually very low cost. It would cost a ground operation for that, which is you know asking Uber to bring you the, the food. It's about $12 to $15. So we're about a third of the cost. But we also have monthly plans, about 
$15 a month when you can order as many times as you want a month from the city and it gets you to your house, which is very interesting because then it becomes really mass and competitive. And as, as we current goal is really to increase operations, we are not looking at the highest revenue possible, but the highest demand possible. And that's why we have these monthly subscriptions that help us with that. Aerial Loop is known for its low cost civilian airline. So how do you manage and generate the revenue? It's very simple if you think about it. You know, the only airlines that are really doing big profits are, are what's called low cost airlines. And what they do is they have low cost, which is for the coach seats. You know, 70% of the, the airplane is filled with them and that covers their operating costs. To me, that analogy happens with food. We bring food, we fill our routes 70% with food and that's where we cover costs. But the benefit is you charge, you know, extra paying passengers with baggages and on timing schedule and leg room and that type of thing. And we have these customers that want to ship medicines and that want to ship medicines right now at this moment. So instead of being a scheduled flight, it's a chartered flight. And that's where the revenue and the profits come from. So it's a very interesting analogy to what already happened through years of optimization in operations in airlines. And we see ourselves as a low cost airline that's making profits, which is very interesting. And our profits are not, you know, our unit economics show profits per flight, per route. Obviously we're a big company. We have 28 collaborators in six countries already. So we, we have a lot of R&D, but what's crucial is we decrease our operations operating cost from $60 to $2 on each flight. And this is a 20 kilometer flight. So you're talking about a 10 cent a kilometer cost of operation, which is quite amazing. And, and the other important note, and I do believe these are our differentiators, low operating costs from $60 at the beginning to $2 right now. And we're going to push this farther down to probably about a dollar a flight, which is quite amazing. Probably the most competitive drone operation that you can find. And on the other side is CapEx, capital expense per route. At the beginning, as I told you, we bought drones and we bought technology and then we decided to make it ourselves because it was core. And we brought our first route cost us $145,000 to start. And the second one cost us only $36,000 to start. So it's four, four and a half times lower. And once we start increasing numbers, we're probably going to get it to $1, $21,000, but it's not $21,000 per drone. It's $21,000 per two drones, two hub systems, all the computers, all the communication. So it's the, what we call the loop system. And if you just compare $21,000 for the whole system is half what we paid for the original one drone. So it allows us to really scale massively because we became low capital intensive for growth. And how sustainable are your drones in the long run? That's probably one of the most interesting parts. Not only time, because, you know, time is clear. One hour, 20 to six minutes. That's kind of the change. Order of magnitude change. But the other big thing for us is impact. We save 90% carbon emissions on a flight. So the same ground delivery would use nine times as much carbon footprint. So we save 90% of the carbon footprint. And I do believe we bring access. So if you think about the EGS movement, you know, environmental and impact. Environmental is clear approach. We have robotic, electric drones that are flying in straight line the most optimal way other than teletransportation teletransportation were the most efficient way to get things from point a to point b and that teletransportation doesn't work anymore anytime soon but so it's the most efficient way multiple layers you know safety environmental but also impact there's we do see our first route you no know, city to suburb but we can connect cities that have lack of infrastructure and lack of access to just basic needs from the city and that creates a lot of impact so i believe we are revolutionizing in connection and i think that's i don't believe drone is like a marginal increment in logistics it's a completely new layer of logistics that is going to be something that cities are planned with and it's going to have impact of millions of people around the world i would like to know your business plans and strategies for the markets in the us and south america it's pretty straightforward we're going to get the numbers wherever we already have permits we're probably going to have seven three three or four countries with permits by the end of this year we're going to increase operations we're going to be the largest operation we are already the largest operation in latam we're probably going to be one of the largest in the world by the end of this year being the largest is not the goal it's being the readiest the one that has more capabilities that can operate at scale multiple international routes but i think from there on 
on what skis, we should be fairly easy to replicate. So whenever there's a permit in Uruguay, Paraguay, Chile, all the ones that we're looking at, as soon as the permit happens, we're going to be ready to put an operation there and start flying and increasing our numbers. And the same with the U.S. We already have a U.S. company. We're planning to start certifying our drone in the U.S., and certifying operator in the U.S. So as soon as we have a permit, which we're already applying, we're going to start an operation. And that's kind of the process of scaling. Because this is a matter of numbers. The more flights you have, the better numbers you show regulators, the more permits they give you. And it's a positive cycle. What are your company goals for the coming year and for the following five years? Can you tell us about your new partnership, launch, plans? Well, first, as I told you, seven routes this year, new routes, getting to about 2,000 flights a week, which is crucial. Uh, we have very strategic partnerships coming up. Some of them are already known, like the one with AB and Beef. So some of them are in the in the process, but very strategic with robotics companies helping us fully roboticize the operation from delivery locker to delivery locker. So it's going to be that you leave something in one drawer or locker, robotic arm picks it up, puts it in the drone, changes the batteries, drone takes off automatically, comes to another locker station and the whole thing happens again. So there's a little bit more capex, it's more expensive, but then the operating cost is really minimal and that's crucial because then it scales worldwide. It's, it's amazing. You're just going to have to have station that's fully automatic, couple of drones and we'll support that operation and set it up, but it's going to operate itself and it's quite amazing. So yeah, we're planning to close deals with some of the largest robotic companies in the world to help us on that optimization because they're also very interested in being involved with these new layer of logistics which is going to be so big and then you ask me five years from now i think five years from now the permits are going to be open in most countries and we're probably going to be no i will say i want area loop to be correlated to drone delivery worldwide to be known maybe we won't operate all all the operations ourselves but an area loop system should be in every city of the countries that have permits within the five years service disruptions especially when you are stranded at an airport and the flight gets cancelled or delayed it may makes travel very uncomfortable. So what are your thoughts on outages caused by weather or faulty equipment? And how are you planning to recover from the avoidance of them in the consumer experience? The nice thing is we replace ground logistics. So we offer customers, you know, if we cannot fly because of weather conditions, we'll do it through ground operations. So it's going to be there late. It's going to take more than an hour, but we'll fulfill your need. And the other vertical is drones are going to be developed that are better and better for not all weather conditions. You know, wind conditions are crucial but sometimes you get hail, high, high wind or heavy rains. And you do have to stop operations because it's just safer, like normal aviation. And it's about also communication. You no, know, we know something's happening. We close operations half an hour earlier than when something bad stops our operations and orders don't come in and customers are not frustrated. So the maybe one or two customers that are already ordered in that 50 to the 30 minute time frame, we fulfill that through ground and then we close operations. We do have a 92% uptime, which is interesting. And I'm, I'm sure it's going to change uh, city by city. It's not going to be the same. But at least for right now, I can tell you it's, it's it's been working very good. And how will the cargo drone market change in the next five years? It's still going to be regular driven. The technology is really amazing. The levels of technology that's happening. For example, I, I was telling you, machine learning is going to be helping drone companies be safer and safer. Vision systems are going to be made safer and safer. So technology is going to keep developing. But I think it's a numbers game. What are the companies that have the biggest metrics, numbers in operations? Because regulators don't know what's this is new and you know it's going to be who has 1 million flights and what's the safety level of those 1 million flights how many incidents how many transparency and number of flights are going to get approvals for regulators and that's really our approach is we want to be the first company to reach 1 million flights that's our goal and i think that's going to be the the competitive advantage that we have but i do hope that most companies also develop in this market very fast because it, the market again is huge when mckinsey and and a few others project a 62 billion dollar year market i think they're not really fulfilling underseen market of ghost companies no there's going to be ghost pharmacies ghost hardware stores so there's going to be a whole layer of smart warehousing you know multiple companies within one warehouse there's going to be restaurants pharmacies and all ghost ghost companies there's going to be immediate drone delivery what i called immediate logistics and they're going to get from smart warehouses to customers really really fast so you avoid the secondary warehouses and then you're going to go either ground logistics with robotic uh, robots or you're going to get with drones so close to customers that they walk to the delivery locker within their neighborhood so that's kind of 
like I think that's gonna shape how cities are built because you know a lot, one of the reasons you stay within the city with the problems of traffic and all that right now is because you have you need access to things you buy things every day but what if you have access to the same things but live in the suburbs with better better quality of life I think it's gonna be a natural tendency and no that's that's a great future to see thank you Pedro for joining in it was an insightful discussion I think we talked about pretty much everything I'm gonna use this interview a lot to remember so thank you very much that was Pedro Menses, CEO of Aerial Loop. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such interesting content and click on the bell icon to get notified. Thank you.